this is going to be a brief, quick demonstration of how to do this uh, proof of office skills assignment. Feel free to speed me up, slow me down, or rewind me as necessary. I'm just going to plow through. That's why we have video. One moment, please. I have opened Word and I'm going to do a blank document. And the first thing I'm going to oh, get rid of that stupid thing every morning, I have to see that. Then I'm going to increase, just so you can see it better, I'm going to increase the size, my zoom down here in the bottom right hand corner. Do you see? Zoom in so that things look larger. If you have a paper for a fussy English teacher, you should next click no spacing style. However, I don't think I'm one of those, so let's not. What we're going to do is start with a title page. So we want to go down a ways. Now you notice that by having normal style instead of no spacing style, what happened is I get an extra space after each enter key. That's, that's the difference between the two. And also notice that I turned on my show hide key. You will need that on for this exercise. And then I guess I'll do, I don't know, centered and bold probably. And let's go up to probably something in the 30s. Typically something in the 30s would be a good size font for a heading. And then the next line will be the same size, but I don't want that. So I'm going to use the clear all formatting. It's the pink eraser to change it back to normal. It takes care of everything all at once. And then probably it would be nice if I maybe inserted a picture. You could get one off the internet if you want. I'm going to take one from this device. And I stuck one over here recently just for fun. It's pretty big, isn't it? I can right click on it and go down to size and make it out. Look at that's 25%. Let's go down to um, let's try 8%, make it small enough. I can make it smaller. And I could center it. You get the idea? Press the enter key. And then I'm going to put my name and probably the date. I'm doing this on July 21st. I'm trying to get an early start. Now I'm selecting those and I'll make that also bold and, I don't know, crank up the size, something. That's the end of my title page. However, I'm not done yet. Let me press the Enter key once more so I'm on a new line. I'm going to clear the formatting to go back to nothing. And I told you to go find a page layout. If you're on a Mac, I believe that's right, you don't have page layout. You'll have to talk to me separately. But on the Design tab, Way over here on the right hand side, it's page borders. And the whole trick is instead of applying it to the whole document, we'll apply it to the first page only. And then what we're going to do is, I don't know, choose something, you know, have fun. If all else fails, try and make it fun. So I did something. Okay. Now then, you need this skill all the way through class. Control Enter, look down in your keyboard, Control Enter inserts a hard page break. It forces a new page to start. And on my new page, notice that I don't have, oops, I was going to do something else. Let me go back. The other thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to put in some page numbers. Where are page numbers? I don't know. They're here somewhere. If I look around, I'll find them. Um, it's probably under uh, should be under layout somewhere. It's on the right hand side of a line. Back on that insert tab way over on the right hand side of the ribbon. Where was it? Page numbers. And where do we want to put them? Uh, probably at the bottom of the page. And which kind do you want? Just let's do just to do plain and in the center, say. Now, is that the correct, most correct way? No, but for this class, it's good enough. So now I have a page number. It's down here, actually in the footer area, in case you don't know about that. And I'm going to close the header footer with that X, or I can press the escape key, or I can double click back in the text. Take your pick. 
All right, now I'll press Control Enter and I'm down on a new page and the next page needs a placeholder for the table of contents. So just let me write table of contents, all right? And that's it, we do that last, okay? And I'm going to press Control Enter again so I get a new hard page break. All righty, now then, it is very important, you must do it like this because we're going to auto-generate that table of contents. Your page headings now must use the heading one style. Don't like that style, you can right click on it and modify it or you can make one down there and then say to update heading one to match. What, I'm not doing all that stuff. Maybe later you can do that. If you wanna play now, that's fine. I'm not requiring it now, just get it in there. And the first page is supposed to be, oh good grief, I forgot the instructions. Um, where where I was, where did I come from, where, whatever it's called. You look on your instructions. I wrote something like that. That's the heading one. I don't like it on the left. I'm going to put it in the center. You don't have to. Do what you want, but it has to be heading. And look on the left-hand side of the line and see that little square box, this one right here. You see that little square box? That tells me, you, that it is using a style. It will not print. Just like all of these show hide keys, they don't print. It, it's just to look at on the screen. And then the next thing you're supposed to do, and your, your monitor will probably show it all on the same line, but I have to go to heading level two, because I told you to, and say uh, biography, I think that's what I put, biography for heading level two. It will be a little bit different formatting. Again, if you don't like it, fix it, but it's fine. As long as you do this, that's all I need. And then you're gonna say something about yourself. I'm a fast typist, can you tell? Okay, something. say something. Um, here or somewhere in the paper, you might wanna put a little bulleted list since we have to use them several times in the semester, just so you practiced. And then to get off the bulleted list, press the enter key the second time and it goes away, tricky, eh? And there's another heading level two that I forgot what it was, vocation, something like that, all right? Whatever. Now I'm done with page one. Yes, it looks stupid. You're gonna write something in there, but it doesn't look very nice, but by the end of the semester, you're gonna have lovely work. We'll do a little at a time. And now I'm gonna press Control Enter again to insert another hard page break so I can get to the next page. And if you look up here, you see where it says hard page break? The backwards P means that, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. The backwards P means that you pressed the enter key. The little dot in the center of the line means you press the space bar. That's a space bar. I have a lot of students in the beginning class, they put a period. That's not, it's not a period, it's a space bar. And if you turn off your show high key, it goes, stop that, it goes away. See, it all goes away, doesn't get printed. It's only to look at when you're working and that's a hard page break. Now, if you'll give me just a second, I'll throw in something for the other two and then, and then I'll do the table of contents, just one moment. I wrote something, all right, you follow my instructions. It's something like this. <clears throat> and then I, there's a page three, okay. And we're on five pages, because you had a title page, table of contents, and then three content pages. So it would be five pages. All right, let's go up to here. And I'm gonna scroll down to the table of contents page. We can leave and hand format a title like this. And if you're in the English class, there are specific rules about that. Well, this is an English class. So I'm gonna take it out. Well, I'll, I'll leave it in and show you what happens. So I press the enter key, and now I'm going to go up to, I don't know, it's up here somewhere, right? That's how we find it. References, table of contents, and then there's automatic, and it says contents, or automatic two says table of contents, and they both look alike. And then there's a manual of table of contents, which um, lets you, type in more by hand, or you could make your own. This one doesn't put a title in. I'm, I'm gonna take automatic table of contents, okay? Whichever, whichever is fine. 
So now, let me zoom back down here so you can see better. So now what I have is the title I typed and the title it typed, and it's in a style, if you notice. Uh, crank it up just a little bit. Okay, and then here's the heading one, and here's the heading two, and it shows the page numbers. In the computer, this is a sign that means a tab, and these are dot leader right aligned tabs, if you want to know such a thing. Okay, now if you see a mistake here, which is almost certain you will because you're a beginner, you do not change here. What you do is say, oh, I made a mistake there, and look th that I can um, click, and well, in the final document, click there, and it will take me right down to it. Um, this time I'm going to have to do it by hand. Avocation, okay. Let me say that it needs to say avocation slash hobby, since you probably don't know that term avocation yet. Vocation is the one you do for money, and avocation is you do for your satisfaction. Well, anyway, so you come down and fix it down in the text, and then you go back up to the table of contents, right-click in here, update table, and you can either update only the page numbers, which is not what we want in this case, or you can update the entire table, and now the new text is in there. And the way you know that it was done correctly with code, well, I can eyeball it pretty well because I've done so many. But if you click on it like this, it turns gray. That indicates that it's code. And you could do the same thing, for example, down in the page numbers. We'll have to double click to get into the footer. But you see how that's, can you see that it's gray? It's code. So, uh, I want you to learn how to look for these things. And the reason I'm teaching you all this mess is just an English class. Oh, they were complaining last semester. Yes, but these concepts, having you do things like this way, is a direct flow into your programming class. Because when you're designing a web page, you have to forward think just like this and set you set formats and data types and all that so that when you're ready to do the programming, it all links in. So this is not an irrelevant exercise. It's a starter to get you on a path toward more uh, difficult material in the future. And besides that, do you ever go into somebody's office and they have everything's a mess and it's dirty and the, the materials are full of spelling errors and you think poorly of them. I don't want you to th people to think poorly of you. I want you to have a very nice, crisp looking presentation. And uh, let me see. Uh, Here's here's the um, preview just to show you quickly what we had. It's still not fancy at all, but you can see that it's it's on this way to a professional looking paper. So um, if you need more help with that, you can always go to YouTube or Google and yeah, I, I'm going to be mean this time. Go ahead, look it up for yourself. See if you can find it. And I'm always here if you need some help. I'm always here. And I don't mind helping you at all, but as independent as possible is what our goal is. So this is how your paper will turn out, something like this. And then you proceed on with uploading it into the discussion board. Have fun with it.